this shoes keep us goddamn oh um, juice tell us a bit about yourself man a bit about what you do you have some cameras here mm -hmm. so um my name is jushin gonzalez i'm a uh, film and analog analogs film yeah oh, Anal so, yeah yeah I'm, I'm a photographer i'm in jersey city i shoot a lot of film um you know born and raised here in jersey city um shoot media format mostly mm. touch on some large format for about five how do you how do you get down that lane of of uh of just film all right so this is gonna sound weird but um i was on reddit and i would like see the analog stuff before mm. i was like oh just throw a visco filter on it'll look good like it'll look just like film and i saw this baby the rz i love her to death i was at my grandmother's funeral at her um at her wake and I was like trying to get my mind off of everything I was on. I was on a um, Facebook marketplace and I saw I saw this camera. I'm there fucking crying my eyes out. I'm like, I'm gonna buy this camera. In that moment. In that moment. I bought the camera. Is that me? I think so. Son of a bitch. <laughs> no, it's cool. Yeah, Go, no, sorry. <laughs> we were right in the store. God damn it. I you just got the phone call. He's a busy man. Juice, you're a busy guy. You were just... Um, Sorry about that. No, you're good. You were just getting into the story. So you were at your grandmother's wake. Yeah, and uh, I saw this film camera. I'm like, yo, I always wanted to buy one. And I was like, fuck it. So I bought it. Fell in love with it. Dang. Yeah, so like I was really inspired by Reddit. I saw a lot of great pictures on film. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it too. I mean, I shot digital for like... Three years up until that point. Mm -hmm. So film was a new challenge. Yeah. Like, so so when you saw it, what was the what were like the attributes that you appreciated so much that you decided to like jump into it? You know, the tones. No, um, it had a unique look to it. Um, it was it was different, and I love what you could do with it too. Like if you scan it, depending on what kind of scanner you have, mm -hmm. there's no set megapixels to it. Like you could make. If you shoot something on this and you do it right, like the scan, you could like cover up this whole wall with a perfect crisp picture. So it was like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know it's um, <clears throat> like digital comes with its certain challenges, but it's also, I guess because it's so easy to like make mistakes on it. Yeah. There's like that extra challenge, like working with film, it's like, okay, I have to make sure this works out. I have to get the exposure. I have to, I have to. Right, so that yeah. kind of comes with that challenge that you have to present to yourself now. Yeah, film uh, makes you slow down your process a lot, especially medium format. This one you get ten shots. This one you only have eight shots per roll. Yeah, so literally yeah. You're, you you've got a limited amount of tries mm -hmm. to get it right. Yeah, and a, a roll of film can be like eight to ten dollars, and that's like a dollar a shot. Do you really want to like keep shooting away and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So it, it definitely makes everything slow down. So you, but you started with digital, which helped get into film and set you up sort of for, for success. Or did you face a lot of shit, like a lot of challenges with jumping into this sort of thing? Well, I started, um, I definitely started with digital, um, but jumping into film, it wasn't that hard. Like, you know, like I was reading, like I look a lot of, into it, like mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of research. So like, I felt like I knew what was going on when I jumped into it. Okay. So what's what's this camera exactly? Cuz you said you were talking this is this is the camera that you were looking at, at yes. when when you were when you were at your grandmother's wake, you were like mm -hmm. you wanted to distract yourself so much yeah. that you were like fuck this shit, yeah, I got to <laughs> Yeah, this is um this is a Mommy RZ67. Um it's it's my baby. Um I really like it because like a lot of photographers that I look up to mm -hmm. like you know like fashion photographers from the 60s, 70s, they all shot film. And there's this one photographer, Herb Ritz. And this was his go-to camera with this lens too, the 180. And um, I love that dude's work. And I was like, yo, he shot it on this. Like, you know, like maybe I should get it. Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe I could do like something like that dope. And um, yeah. Yeah, cool. That's how it started. Cool. It's like a natural... It's a natural process, sort of. Yeah. Inspired by like this very almost impulsive moment. Yeah. Of just jumping into it. Had a big dose of fucking in my system. 
Yeah, no, that's what you need sometimes to to get some shit done, especially if it's something you're really interested in. Yeah. You know, sometimes you because you overthink a lot. You know, I think that's what I was talking to you about too, where I wanted mm-hmm. to get a medium format camera, but I haven't because I was like, oh, is it gonna come damaged? Is it gonna come yeah. right? I was like, I gotta get the right model. So here I am, like overthinking, but you just like, yeah, jump right into it. You know, like I could have just left a bad review if it came out shitty, right? Yeah, get my money back on PayPal. Just looking, <laughs> just looking. Um, yeah, and you have a pretty cool style, man. I know you work with uh, pretty cool models. Like yeah, they're yeah. really open to get experimental and and create something unique and different. Yeah. How do you uh, like? How do you work with models? How do you get them comfortable to the point where they're you know they're getting naked in front of you? You know, it's for art, but now it's like they're showing you yeah. part of them. So the big thing for me always maintain eye contact because that's like the model has to be comfortable too Mm -hmm. i mean you could be a dick and be like oh do this do this do that but like i'm sure like at a higher level but like when you're like you know on a lower level it's like who are you to be telling model that you know so i think like you got to make the model feel as comfortable as possible for your your best shots Mm -hmm. yeah because like if they don't feel comfortable you know like their face is going to look like a deer in a headlight yeah, they're like, what am I doing? Yeah, exactly. I hate that. What am I doing? I hate that. Yeah. Um, I was talking to my friend Adam about this, too. A lot of it is kind of like breaking down sort of levels of comfortability through mm-hmm. communication, like using your words carefully. Yeah, like He course. was saying like, uh, and I would make this sort of like, uh, I don't want to say mistake, but I guess like habit of using this word like, hey, relax your face, you know, when there's some tension. Yeah. You know? But he was telling me like, oh, he was shooting with this uh, yoga instructor. Okay. And she was telling him like, Adam, listen, instead of saying relax your face, which makes people feel like, oh, I'm not relaxed, say soften, soften soft. your face. Because then they'll be like, oh, okay, I guess, you know, something else triggers because that's literally, I guess, the power of words, mm, yeah. you know, like you that say makes, something. That makes sense. I'm going to try that. It's cool, yeah. Like when I heard him say that, I was like, "Oh, okay. How come? Why didn't I think of that?" It took a yoga instructor to be like, you know, come with these other like verbiages, <laughs> a little softer sort of hey, approach. Yoga is yoga is a good, you know. Yeah. You do yoga? Head. You do yoga? No, I did it like once. Mm. Yeah, but but you still you, go you to the gassy. gym, right? Hmm? You still go to the gym. Cause I see, I remember seeing your videos where you like you with a friend and you do like a pile driver and you do like these wrestling moves <laughs> in the gym for fun. Yeah, I had a gym in my basement. They put a wrestling mat, which is like the biggest mistake. It said mm-hmm. no grappling. First thing we did, grapple. Yeah, how can't you? That's yeah, a part of the whole thing. Exactly. Like I was doing like rock bottom and the Stone Cold Stunners. Oh my god, yeah. it's cool you have friends who are down to do that. Yeah, just I, get the I, fuck. I, I looked out a knife somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can I'm just surrounded by people that just want to do shit. Yeah. How about this camera next to it now? This is uh, the Fuji GW690. So the negative gives you uh, six centimeters by nine centimeters. This mm-hmm. is six, six centimeters by seven centimeters. That's accurate, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's testing that, you. Yeah, that's how big they are. Uh, the negatives are supposed to 35 millimeter. Um, this is actually my friend. He let me borrow it yesterday. Guy's a sweetheart. He's a, like a genius. Like, if you're familiar with the Leica cameras, mm-hmm. uh, this is a rangefinder. This is a SLR. So rangefinders don't have a mirror in here, and you have to like look through here, and it has two images, and you have to align them. Mm. Yeah. Damn, son, you're getting layered with it. Yeah. You're always trying to challenge yourself, and you already had a shoot with this. You said, I think. Um, I took it out to shoot yesterday, the day I got it, and I developed and scanned the film today. So I finally got it. It was actually my girlfriend that shot it. So I'm mm. gonna go surprise her with a 36 by 55 inch print. Mm. I'm gonna go bust out after this. Oh, you shot you shot her or no? She was just shooting around. Uh, we're in Bayonne right now, so she she has an interest in rangefinders for some reason. She, she shoots too. A little no, bit. she was never into cameras. And then I got a Leica at home, and she looked into it, and she just got in. She was like watching mad videos about like rangefinders, and I'm like, oh my god, if you're into it, let's let's do it. Weird. So my friend let me borrow this one, and. My girlfriend has tiny hands. I have huge hands. This still looks big in my hands. No, I think it's a monster. Yeah. So she was like, we walked around and she actually liked it. She liked it better than Leica, actually. So, so like, you know, she gets into cameras and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, keep, keep doing it. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's ideal where like the SO is kind of into the same world mm-hmm. as you are, you know? 
Yeah, like I, I already tried to force uh, Japanese pro wrestling onto her and uh, didn't work. <laughs> 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 it didn't, like, she wasn't into it. What does she do? What does she like to do? Uh, like in general? Mm-hmm. Uh, she's, a, she's big into books. Oh, so she's a big reader. Yeah, she's a big reader. Good. That's good. You need that balance too, though, yeah. about life. You're like If you're with someone that does the same thing, it's like you can't escape. Yeah. You can't escape like the world, you know? So it's good to have sort of a separation. Is she doing the same thing to you or you're reading a book or something nowadays, like a book a week or something? Uh, well, we tried. I have this thing, like, I'm pretty sure I have ADD. Like, I just keep reading the same line over and over and over. I'm like, ah, I can just look it up oh. on Wikipedia, look up a synopsis. Yeah, and get the, the sense of it. Yeah. yeah. I love comic books, though. So if you want to read comic, like, if she wants me to read comic books, I'm all for it. That's true. Yeah. I remember Listen, that. Babe. <laughs> it's a like little, little fucking. Hey, give me some comic books. Does she get you comic books? Uh, nah. No, it's just all you. Yeah, it's all you kind of digging into me, it. Yeah. You've been into it for a while, right? Like, we've known each other for a pretty long time. Yeah, I've time. known you since what? You were in second grade? Yeah, grammar school. Yeah, because you went to school with my brother. Uh huh. And I went to school with your brother. Yeah, 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 man. My brother's married now. Jeez. Yeah, I saw that. You Shout that? out to yeah. Max, man. Yeah, yeah. My boy Josh shot the photo. It was a really beautiful wedding. Yeah. A little quaint, simple, in a cabin in the woods. A little eerie, a little eerie. Yeah. But it was winter, and you know, it was a nice snow sort of landscape Ooh. for the photos. Yeah, that was really nice. nice. It was really nice. But yeah, no, I've known you for a bit, man. Yeah. I've known you for a bit. We've gone on a journey. Yeah, man. Right? A lot of different yeah. shit. Same grammar school, same high school, same college. Mm-hmm. Except I left Marist after the, the first two years. Yeah, I mean, I was gone by then. Max graduated with you guys, yeah. Yeah. When did you, like, at what point did you start getting into, like, uh, film or f- photography? Like, photography. that whole world, yeah. Because when we knew each other early on, like... You never came off the yeah. as like giving a shit about any of that stuff. I just played football. Yeah, <laughs> you were just like sport, like WWE. Like I remember that, you know. So yeah. when when did it start trickling in, like that interest? Um. So here's the story. I got into photography. Um. You know, I don't know if you remember after eighth grade, like we would all go to um, the waterfront, the Newport waterfront. I don't know if you used to go, um, but. <laughs> we would all go to the waterfront. I see the skyline. I'm like, yo, I want to take a cool picture with that. Like, I want to take a really dope picture of the skyline. And eventually in college, right, I'm struggling. I don't know what I want to major in yet. I'm like two, three years in. So I'm like, so I get a camera. And I'm like taking pictures of the skyline every day, every day. I'm like, this is what I always wanted to do. And um, that's how I got into photography in general. But then I got into portrait photography because a friend was like, hey, can you take pictures for my uh, music recital? And I'm like, okay, cool. I wanted to like, you know, I want to do good. So I got um, a strobe light mm-hmm. and that like portraits just went downhill from there. Like, I mean, like the ball started rolling. I didn't oh, yeah. Downhill. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You started and it just went. <laughs> yeah. Fuck this. Just fucking crash and burn. <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah. And I think I remember when you started investing in the equipment too. Yeah. That's cool. How did the shoot go? The first time using that strobe light. It was really good, actually. Like, I was surprised. I was like, how the fuck did I do this? It was easy. It was not easy, but it, it became, like, a natural thing. So, it's, I guess it was a good thing that it was your friend that you were yeah, with. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that whole experience was kind of a little calmer than, like, a immediately serious thing. Like, a client, like, bring yeah. you on board or something. No, oh, you were, no. like, with a friend first. Everything always was with friends. Mm. So, um... Yeah, it went really good. Use a smoke machine and the strobe lights it came out great. Ooh, smoke machine? Yeah. Nice, man. Get that depth. I have this weird thing where I like playing with fire and smoke machines. and. Yeah, I remember seeing fire in some shots. Yeah. You Mod- just burn shit. Yeah, I had a model light her hand on fire. Yeah, how twice. Did that? Oh, fuck. So it was did you get, was it a nice shot? Like, ah. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. Um, so she held it in front of her hand like this, and it looked like it was coming out of her mouth at one point. Oh. Yeah, and then I had another one. It was a dancer. I really wanted to shoot a dancer on fire, but she was like singeing her forearm hair, mm. and I guess the smell was like fucking with her head. And she like, she was like, nah, nah she didn't, she didn't look comfortable in the shots at all. Oh man, what what kind of drove you into that whole world? The fire? Yeah, just kind of starting at this like dangerous level. I mean, pushing things, pushing the envelope already. So I'm a huge fan of like Dragon Ball Z and you know animes. <sighs> so. It's like, yo, you'd be dope if you had a fireball. Like, I know how to make little explosions. Mm-hmm. Like, controlled little explosions. Like, like to yourself, though. Like, somewhere 
but with a model now yeah like a small like like a six foot flame how does that even work what is that so you have like the fire and you could take um this thing i'm not gonna give away my secret you oh sprint, you don't gotta reveal the secret yeah you, yeah, you yeah, sprinkle yeah, it on the fire and it comes up mm. and you know from like a from a high point yeah and it'll like because it'll light up the whole thing that you sprinkle on it so you get like a nice little wall of fire mm. it's not gunpowder right <laughs> it's actually something you get at the supermarket <laughs> Oh God! Oh, cool. Is that I'll, I'll tell you after the podcast. That's cool, man. That's cool that you're already kind of like uh, knowing these influences, trying to draw them in, you know, yeah. and bringing them into your work. Because I think it's important to always be sort of like taking things in, because that's how you learn, you know. Like through that experimentation, I assume you learn. Okay, now you know how to do like yeah. more controlled and how to like have someone look normal or look a certain way yeah. doing that thing. I always do it too, like before. Um, the model does it like i light my hand on fire first but look it's okay mm -hmm. yeah that's good that's the same thing i feel like as a as a director too it's like if you want uh, and specifically too for photographers if you're trying to get a certain look or a certain like feeling mm -hmm. like we sort of do the whole thing first like when i direct yeah. if it's a certain like like emotion or a certain motion like certain thing that i'm trying to get out of the person mm -hmm. i like if it doesn't communicate verbally i just always try to like act it out and give them this guidance to sort of follow. Yeah. And it helps. It helps like with uh, getting the idea across a mm -hmm. lot easier. Yeah. For that too, it's just more like safety too. It's like, look, it's fine. Yeah. I, I could do it. You could it's do okay. it. It's <laughs> okay. I have long hair. <laughs> that would be kind of a dope ass photo. Yeah. Like the hair on fire. I love taking pictures of people fucking me up. <laughs> like, oh man, you must have a lot. I mean, if you were experimenting with that. Yeah, like, I mean, not drastic fuck ups where like it's like, bodily harm but like no yo I've never like I had a friend she was on a uh, roller skates one time mm. I was like you know I'm gonna take it. if you bust your ass I'm gonna take a shot I was having trouble with the strobe that whole day she busted her ass and the strobe went off perfectly oh. and I got the shot what was it like felt like fell backwards she was like forward like this oh. I was like yo I think it's so cool man like taking these moments like freezing time yeah for a moment you know you've gone as far as like printing it though yeah. You got as far as even getting what's the printer in your studio? Uh I have a 36 inch Canon printer. It's not the best printer, but you know, I found it on Craigslist for cheap. So mm -hmm. I'm just at a starting point. Make prints like this wide. Yeah. I and saw like yeah. this this tall. Color prints too. Yeah, right? color prints. Did you start with did you start with black and white or you always uh, tried to like kind of incorporate color into the work? No, I I, I tried both. Like, you know, I experimented with both. I'm still, like, in the experimenting phase with it. Mm -hmm. So, like, I haven't mastered anything about it yet. I see. I see. Is there anything you prefer with, uh, like, photography? Like, you like the, you like incorporating colors or do you like black and white and, like, that contrast? So, I for film, I love slide film. Slide film is... Um, slide film. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. You're about to... Yeah, yeah, Slide film is, um, you know how you get a negative? Mm -hmm. So, on a slide film, you get a positive. It's what, um, like, old school fashion photographers used to use. If it was color, it was most likely on a slide film. Because, mm -hmm. like, you get very vibrant and true to, like, the true to the situation color. Yeah, I, I must have known that at some point. Because I took, like, two film photography yeah. courses at NGCU. And uh, one of them was color. And that's why it sounds, like, sort of familiar. It's kind of cool, man, the process. Yeah, the process. I remember NGCU too, like when the you would develop the rules. So I think you kind of spoke about it earlier when we were just talking to each other. It's like you put it in the spool, you take the roll out, but in complete darkness. And then once you put yeah. it in the spool, you close it. Then you're safe to like head out into light. So you have your own situation at home where you kind of do that process, right? Yeah, I use um I use a changing bag. So it's like a pitch black bag with like two layers. I used to do it in my bathroom. I used to like shove towels everywhere, mm -hmm. make it light tight on the fucking floor or something, yeah. just to make sure the light doesn't. <laughs> make leave. sure no yeah. light comes in. But then I like uh, watch YouTube ghost video, and like I started getting chills. Like I started imagining shit. Mm. I started being able to see in the dark. I was like, nah, fuck this. Mm -mm, yeah. Like I just threw all the film inside the tank. I didn't even reel it up. I just closed it and I just got the fuck out. Of you just got the fuck out. Yeah, I'm like, fuck this. Mm, man the imagination runs wild man it does especially when you can't see shit yeah that's why at night when you see a fucking sweater it's like what the fuck is that yeah what the fuck is that shadows from trees mm -hmm. like, it gets weird your mind though is just like playing tricks on you do you but do you believe in paranormal activity you believe in spirits oh yeah like i do that? actually yeah oh man yeah 
I, uh, have you in uh you sound like you encountered something yeah like, i've seen like, some oh, stuff uh shit so you I, think if you talk about it it's like no i don't mind talking back. about it it's just like it's weird yeah so um have you seen predator the movie predator yeah you're one ugly motherfucker yeah yeah that so like you know when he's invisible like mm-hmm. you see his outline you can kind of see through him so i was in my house um and my mom when we were younger she would like just turn off all the tvs turn off everything just the lights just help us with our homework and you could hear like dead silence like you could hear like the electricity and the light bulbs yeah so my kitchen the way it is is there's an entrance here there's an entrance here and this entrance you got the door to leave the apartment so we heard like a dish move and my mom thought it was a mouse or something so she went in one side to like see mm-hmm. and then as soon as she went here the other side i saw like a predator it was like it was like a human shape but it had like that predator camel and just went out i was like yo fuck this Shit, was that was that at night yeah it was like six seven o'clock at night yeah that's that's pretty weird yeah and then uh come to that building out. that you live in too is pretty old yeah pretty old yeah it was uh yeah, it's pretty creepy too my uh my uncle saw weight move in the gym by itself damn we got a ghost working out yeah he hasn't, trying to work he hasn't out been in there like people i know like they get chills in there i'm like yeah i lived here my Has whole somebody life. died in there um, ninety nine point nine percent chance people have died in there. Damn, in the gym or it used to be. Something oh, in the else. gym. I don't know about in the gym. Mm. Yeah, no, the building. I'm sure. Yeah, the yeah. whole building. I'm sure. But the gym. The gym. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe right. Maybe somebody was working late at night alone, and they just didn't have somebody to spot them. Like ah! oh. some old dude, you know. You always gotta have somebody to spot you, man. Yeah, yeah. I dropped a 30, 135 pound bar on my throat one time. Oh fuck! Yeah, Cause I got a friend. He I just kind of felt that. I was laughing so hard I didn't feel it though. Cause like it was on a <laughs> yeah, de- it was on a decline off. bench. Yeah. And my friend. Oh, so you're like you're like really far back. I'm like benching and then I'm laughing and it just goes here while my head's up. But I'm laughing so hard because my friend he has huge tits. And yeah. I saw up his shirt <laughs> and I just saw tits. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is, has this been your friend for a while? You said you, this is the first time seeing his tits, or it's just like you're. No, he always had tits. But he always had like, tits. It's, it's just, just like, like when you're when you're lifting weights, you know, like you have to put your head like a serious place. Yeah. One thirty five, you know, that's like your warm up. So when you see it, it was like. Unless you're warm, if you're a fucking monster already. Well, you know. Yeah. Well, my warm is like, my warm is like twenty, twenty five. Okay. I'm just getting back. You know, I I get to like. If it's if it's just a decline, yeah, it's just staying there right now. That's yeah. like actually like my max warm up. I lied. Warm up is probably like fifteen, <laughs> and then I hit twenty twenty five, and that's like that's like the final set usually. Hey, but, but I just started coming back to the gym, so now yeah. it's like getting more comfortable with like the higher weights. Yeah, I haven't lifted weights probably in like a while, like over two years. Oh. Like I haven't lifted weights seriously, so I'm probably weak as shit. Damn. Yeah, I remember I went to squat 135 and I pulled my hamstring. Shit. I was yeah. like, oh, man. You wouldn't think, though. You look strong, but I guess it's your body that's already kind Yeah, of I'm, like, like, really fat, so, like, I could just throw my weight around. Yeah, if you were in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking. I mean, I know jiu-jitsu, too, so. Oh, word? Yeah. Damn, when did you practice that? Uh, I trained jiu-jitsu for, like, a year. And then um, I haven't trained a year because uh, of COVID. Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but before that, I was like going to Muay Thai Jiu Jitsu. Word. Yeah. How, how are you? How did you deal with COVID? How did you deal with like that first, first few months? Nobody wanted to go out. Nobody wanted to shoot. Postponements, cancellations. Oh yeah, I wasn't doing nothing. Like you were just laying around. Yeah, I was laying around. I like wasn't sure how to go out. I was wearing gloves, masks, everything. Yeah. Like, and then like, like my friends that were like they didn't take it seriously and they were just being around me i'm like yo wear that shit i'm gonna fuck you up like i had to threaten him at this point like i felt horrible doing it but it's like bro you never know like, like you yo. live with parents right yeah no nah, man it was pretty it was a pretty serious moment like now we're so jaded about it and like, yeah. you know we have like these creative masks now who gives a fuck it's like woo. You yeah. got like the cool looking. Uh, who's that from again? Uh, Friday Thirteen, J- Jason. Yeah, there you go. You got Jason. You know, I've always had the medical blue, but no. Um, some people were taking it too lightly, like too casually. Yeah. You know, some people didn't even really believe. Like, oh yeah, it's not. It's, they're taking it too far. It's not that serious. 
yeah. meanwhile there's literally people dying but it takes until like someone loses someone in their own circle yeah. for them to take it seriously and that's the shit you want to avoid you know? yeah so you're threatening your friends like fuck them you know fucking yeah because like, they're just being like, around me hanging out my studio i'm like yo nah do you ever like backhand like put that shit on nah, nah. never got that serious nah. i have that's why oh yeah mm-hmm Several times. Yeah. You have to. You have to put friends in your place, man. Look at that Batman Robin meme. Was that Batman to Robin Batman or Robin? Robin meme, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So you no, you were just chilling though? You were just chilling for the most part? Oh, kind of yeah. like catching up on yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean like I was just at home like just watching YouTube. I lost my job. Yeah. So it was like um, You were bouncing, right? You were a bouncer? Yeah, I was a bouncer. So like yeah, you know, everything the, shut down. The right way to say it is bounce or not bouncing, but that's what you can say too. I'm I just for some reason I'm security at a bar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for some reason I just imagine you bouncing. Oh, you're bouncing, yeah. right? Yeah. No, yeah. So you lost that for a moment, or they they just kind of momentarily let you go, or like did they tell you? Well, oh. I mean, everything was shut down, so yeah, there was really nothing to do. So uh, yeah, I just uh, lost my job. So I was like, I tried street photography for at a time. So, like, because I couldn't shoot people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Or at least comfortably, right? Yeah. In I, that beginning. I remember coming to Mana, too. And it was like a, it was dead. Mm -hmm. It was like, you couldn't hear nothing. Like, nobody was here. Yeah, they closed it off to the public. Yeah. And then people just didn't want to really come in anyway. Mm -hmm. oh, which is like a shame, because I remember their, their open houses. I have yet to, like, really experience them. Oh, I have yet to experience one. The open yeah. houses are great. What'd you do the last open house? If so, you remember. The last open house I did was fall 2019. Mm -hmm. I only had one open house. And um, what I did was I shot 3D portraits of people on film. Ooh. Yeah. The ones that, the ones are like. Yeah, that. yeah, the, the little. What well, camera ones. is that? That's just a 3D camera. Yeah, it's like a Nishika um, N8000. It has mm -hmm. uh, four lenses on it. So that's how cool. you get that effect, and it takes up two uh, two frames of film. And then I did um, contact sheets. So I did mm. film contact sheets, and then the print over it. Contact sheets isn't a contact sheet when it's uh, the whole roll. Yeah. Developed right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did that for people? You? No, no, no. Like I did that um, like to show to show my work. Oh, got you. Yeah, okay. And then um, and you had it around. Yeah, like, yo, I, I worked my ass off for that one. Like, to get those prints out, like, the four days leading up to it, I probably slept, like, 10 hours altogether. Word, yeah. Yo, like, I was like, I just you took to it fucking it serious. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how I got introduced to Manna through an open house. And I was like, yo, I want to, you know, like, I want to do good. Like, I want to look good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I went pretty hard. No, it's cool, like, man. Yeah. And, the, and the, I assume, like, having been a part of the event, outside now that you're inside mm -hmm. it's like okay you kind of know what people are doing and yeah how to like how to present your shit yeah like and then i had something set up for um i started working on my uh spring 2020 um project and then covid mm -hmm. yeah so covid hit what was that project about so i was working with um so my friend angie right um she does like these uh mannequin torsos and then she puts like flowers on them and does like great designs so i was like yo how about we put that on a person hmm. so like we were gonna have the mannequin and then have a person we we're gonna go by decade like the 60s inspired 70s inspired 80s inspired 90s inspired and then with the flowers and everything and um yeah we were, like i was gonna shoot it on a uh, medium format i was gonna have the hmm. uh the contact sheets the actual print and then the mannequin how much? Yeah. Wow, it's pretty creative, man. Yeah, I like how you don't um, you don't like constrain yourself. You know, you don't like hunt for this like typical like oh headshots, uh, corporate. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't hunt for this money. Like uh, you, you're open to these creative ideas. You know, mm -hmm. not not a lot of like photographers. I feel like experiment enough nowadays. Yeah. Like I know John John, he does some crazy shit too yeah, with like exposures really and good, like yeah. lighting and all this stuff. I feel like that's always important just yeah. to like keep exploring shit. Yeah, I love that he shoots film too. Yeah. yeah. I actually met him on a Reddit film forum. You met John? Uh yeah, I met John John on um the Reddit 
uh, one of the subreddits. I was like, yo, you're from Jersey City. He's like, oh, yeah. that's cool. And then like we met. And I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. You guys didn't realize that you were like right here. Oh, this was before Manor. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, How, you've been here for like two years. Uh, How long for? about a year and a half. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I like Manor, man. It's always kind of like I mean, right now it's like you know. Yeah, it's COVID, but it's always got this feeling, this like constant feeling of mm -hmm. like artists working and creating. So it kind of keeps you sort of like, okay, I gotta go, gotta keep yeah. doing my shit. And we stay in the basement so much, we don't realize like how what like the caliber of artists upstairs. Yeah, like yeah. there's like a lot of high caliber artists upstairs. I know. Yeah, John Manion, he John shot Manion, like yeah. yeah, he's he's shot like uh, Jay Z's covers, yeah. Nas, DMX. He's got like so many. He's actually people. the one that opened my eyes up to Mana because I saw. On his Instagram that he was here, I'm like, two other two blocks away. So mm -hmm. I came, I met him. Yo, he was cool as shit. Yeah, I feel yeah. like yeah, I feel like you gotta be a chill ass fucking dude if you've worked with so many like yeah. acclaimed like incredible artists. You know, I mean, you'd be surprised. That could go to your head, you know. Yeah. But he was a pretty humble dude. I haven't met him. He was. I haven't had the luxury cool. yet. Yeah, like I, he was downstairs in the basement talking to somebody. He was planning a shoot one time. I walked by. He's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? I'm like, yo, he didn't have to say hi. Yeah. Like, you know, like, bro, you you that guy, bro. Yeah, yeah. Don't fucking say hi to me. That was, <laughs> like, you, don't to, you don't want to say hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were talking about ego earlier. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's good to it's good to know that he's got one that's like not about arrogance. Yeah, exactly. Super chill. Super chill, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of water real quick. Take it. Hang on. Yo, these mics are crazy. Like you can you hear yourself breathing, right? Yeah, like I've never felt fatter in my life. You do an ASMR video. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking about doing ASMR at some yeah. point. Eating crab legs. Yeah, crab legs. Things that kind of like have a good chew to them. Mm -hmm. Cow tongue. Cow tongue lingua. Added to the list. Raw lingua. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Chew mm. I think you go, this was delicious. Yeah, I, I don't drink water enough. <clears throat> yeah. I try to. I don't well. I don't take care of myself too much. Uh, yeah. Not on you know. Not on purpose. It's like you get lost in the work, yeah. the editing, and the the shooting. You forget to eat. Yeah, it's 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 weird because uh, well now I'm in the place where like I want to gain weight and you yeah. know I'm going to the gym. I'm doing yoga actually too, so I'm I'm aware that you know your mental state is directly connected mm -hmm. to like diet and the way you treat yourself, the way you treat your body. Uh, but like. Man. Top of last year, last year, I wasn't doing too great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I mean, I would recommend jujitsu. Mm. It's fun and it's a lot of work. So, like, that would be in shape. Like, I lost 25 pounds in, like, three months, not a change to my diet. Oh, yeah? Doing just that? Just going once a week. And it's a lot of grappling and it's a lot of, like, what? what's the, what's that world like? So, it's, like, pretty much grappling, like, um... A lot of uh, MMA is like found like based in jujitsu. Like when it comes to the ground, jujitsu and wrestling are like the main things. Mm -hmm. uh, jujitsu is uh, super fun. It's like super fun, a lot of work, but you don't realize how much work you're putting in because you're having so much fun. Yeah, and it's probably like a real uh, therapeutic thing to it, right? Because when yeah. you're in it, it's you, your mind really can't like trail off to anything else. You're just focusing on what's going on, right? Yeah, like actually, like the way I got into it was I always wanted to do it. But it was always expensive, and um, the spot I went to, uh, they had a deal. Uh, Enzo Grace of Jersey City, it's on uh, Barrow in Columbus. Mm. So uh, they had a deal, and like I went, I took it. It was like a discount for like one month, and I was like, oh my god, oh. I love this. And like, you know, like I started getting so confident, but like, cause like I'm a big dude, but like mm -hmm. I was never too mm -hmm. confident when it came to like fighting and stuff, cause like I'm realistic. Like you could be a big dude and like get knocked out by like a smaller dude, easy. Yeah, if there's like, like planning. If there's strategy behind, yeah, it, like know. just because you're big, it doesn't mean anything. So like you know, I learned like jujitsu, and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty confident. Like you know, I wasn't picking fights with nobody, but I'm like, I would know how to handle myself in this now, situation. Right now, if you're walking with your lady and some shit with <laughs> now, yeah, break a fucking leg off, <laughs> chew on it like some cow tongue, or get stabbed. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Wait, do they do they give you those examples where someone's like it's not like that, right? Where it's like someone has a knife and they're like, no, oh, like no, diffusing. No, no. no, that's just the it's just the art form. No, of so, that's uh, what they focus one on. One of my coaches, he was like, Yo, man, he's like, Jiu Jitsu is great unarmed. 
He's like, but I'm not going to be one of these dudes. I'm not going to tell you how to disarm a gun. If a guy points a gun at you, you get the fuck out of there. Yeah, you try to dip. Or He's try like, to you, you get out of there, you give him your money. Mm-hmm. He's like, because the gun shoots. It, it doesn't choke you out. It kills you. Yeah. Unless so, you're fucking John Wick and somehow like, <laughs> yeah, you just know how to dodge a bullet. You know? I mean, yeah, you could. Keanu Reeves can only dodge bullets, though. He's the only one that I think learned I, it. Yeah, I don't think Morpheus. they use, I don't think they use CGI. Yeah. Uh, it, it was real on set. Yeah, it was real. Heard, they had a, they had a stuntman. He he did die. Oh, the stuntman died. And Karen was like, "Fuck it, I'll do it myself." And he fucking just killed it. <laughs> he <laughs> probably felt bad. He's like, "I should have done this in the first place." <laughs> <laughs> he felt terrible. Like, what am I gonna tell his family? <laughs> the other guy, <laughs> the other guy had a whole family, man. That is cool, man. Yeah. I, and and I agree about the fact that like it made you feel more confident and stuff because I've never been in a fight either, you know. And that's mm-hmm. one thing that's always in the back of my head, like, bro, I've never really. Like been in a in a situation where I had to like defend my yeah. own like life till like you know the the bitter end. Yeah. Um. And I feel like there's a natural instinct that might kick in if mm-hmm. you are like you know fighting like something's gonna kick mm-hmm. in. But if there's no like understanding of like your yeah. body in that physical way, if you have no strategy, if you don't know how to really hit, you might you might hurt yeah. yourself more than you're gonna hurt the fucking yeah, other exactly. person. Yeah. You know? Like you know they always say like it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Or say yeah. it one more time. It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Mm. So, like, it's always good to know these things. It's a good... Where's that from? Dude? Is that just a random thing? Know? I honestly forgot. It's from something, though. I just forgot. That's dope. No, it's cool. You have yeah. these these quotes. It's good to have these quotes to drop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, fuck. I wouldn't want to be a gardener during a, a war. <laughs> during a war. Like, That's what they did in Germany, I think. They just grabbed people. I think World War II, they just start grabbing people to fight, you know, just regular uh, folk. Here's a gun. Good luck. And they're like, okay. Isn't that what Japan did in World War II? Yeah, I feel like a lot of... Yeah, like, I feel like a lot of those countries that were kind of on the losing stick yeah. forced their civilians to It'd be take like up that. arms. Yeah, World War II was pretty bad. It was. The first time we... Uh, was that the only time we nuked? Or yeah. a country nuked another country, America. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, the only, yeah. and then we realized, like, holy shit. Yeah, that was the only time a nuclear weapon was used. Holy shit, yeah, that was pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, it was, that it got to that point. It was fucking wild. That's like a that's like a turn off button. Nobody talks about the fire bombs too. The fire bombs. They fire bombed the shit out of Tokyo. The napalm bomb. The napalm bombing. Uh, I think it was ballistic bombs or napalm bombing. One of those. But they fucked Tokyo. Uh, I I remember. I, I don't know if that movie was based on it. Uh, grave of the fireflies have you seen that i think it was about that and it's like about this kid who was basically like delocated because of uh i think it was the napalm bombings uh because the fireflies were connected to this like and, and i remember seeing but it's, it's an animated movie too okay um it's really beautiful but no yeah a lot of that's just kind of brushed in a, brushed down in history yeah it's not stuff that we're proud of so we kind of keep it off the books yeah. <laughs> keep it off the books Oh, wait, what happened here? Oh, I hope that wasn't off for too long. Oh, man, I need an intern. <laughs> um, Craigslist. Do you have an LLC, if you mind me asking? Yeah, I am I am my own LLC. You can... Uh, I am my own. Wanderoke LLC. Yeah, I could yes. definitely... You can go talk to colleges and offer them credits. Mm-hmm. You can have a kid just press a button. Yeah, um, I, I want to get this, like sort of world more situated so i know like if i'm bringing someone on because having been an intern before like mm-hmm. i know that feeling of like kind of feeling like i'm not doing much or not learning a lot and you know when i bring someone on board i want them to feel like they're getting yeah. something good you know something good out of it uh whether it's like on set you know so if things are happening like consistently bringing them on set you know and, and, and this sort of stuff is kind of like rudimentary at some point you could kind of like understand the whole procedure but yeah you know it's kind of like it's a little basic at first what did you uh what did you where, where did you do your internship um the fir- my first internship was in uh north bergen with this like spanish company oh, okay. uh they dealt with like finances and like i was like behind the scenes where i had to like turn the cameras on oh, okay. uh, they had like a teleprompter i just make sure it was working how'd you like it uh it was cool. It was cool. It was like a first sort of time I'm kind of into this world of like, mm-hmm. they went online on the radio and they streamed on uh, YouTube. 
Wow. So it was like 7 a.m. So it was super early. So that's the only thing I didn't really care for. It was like really early. Yeah, I had to like show five. up. Yeah, I had to really. And, and my dad brought me at the time because I didn't have a car. Mm-hmm. So he would bring me over there, drop me off. And then uh, uh, I remember this guy I was working with, Guillermo. They're, they're, you know, very small crew. I think it was just like me, him, and one other person. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty chill. You know, it wasn't exactly the world I wanted to like get into. And it was pretty simple, kind of just like turn the camera on and like make sure things are running smoothly. But it was also paid. Oh. It was kind of paid. It was a little bit. It was only like 50 bucks or something. But at the time, I was like, oh, cool. I mean, internship is supposed to be just for credits, you know? So uh, that, yeah, that that wasn't what uh, kind of like stuck onto me, though. I went to Milk Studios for, for like my third internship. And that's what kind of was more into the world. Like it was more editorial based. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of shit that I remember from there. Was this after college? Mm-mm. All in college. All in college. So I did like three internships, like one each semester that I decided to be in media arts. I went through the same process. Like I wasn't sure what I wanted to do uh, for a while. I was like undeclared until like I got to um, like the end of my sophomore year, time going towards junior year. Mm-hmm. I just like, okay, I'm kind of, it's like the third year I'm getting into and I'm not sure what to do. Yeah. So decided media arts and then from there uh i tried to do as many like internships as i could to kind of keep getting like that outside experience because ngc wasn't really doing it that's smart yeah and and leg studio like legs media i think it was called was dissolved while i was there so it was always interesting i was in these i was in these like businesses that uh ended up disappearing like Mm -hmm. my second internship was at this place robot fondue and the office like closed down after i left it uh, I guess just because they were focusing on their Texas. I think they were in Texas, uh, mm-hmm. Austin, Texas or something. They had an office. So I think they were just focusing in on their New York branch shut down. Then Legs Media, I was in there. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot about organizing projects and like visually like pulling moments and selects, like kind okay. of looking through. I learned a lot. And then it kind of slowed down towards the end. And I realized before the internship ended that the business, like the company was dissolving. Yeah. Like that that branch of the company because Milk Studios is a yeah. is a big thing. So... I ended up going to this other post processing thing in Milk called like Vellum mm-hmm. and just kind of sitting around watching mm-hmm. these guys like touching up people's skin and doing all this other shit. I didn't really learn much from there. I hate though. editing. Editing is always a boring part for me. Mm-hmm. For me, me too. It's really strenuous. Um, everything else is pretty fun. Like, and then, you, and then you stare at something and then you adjust it, but it'll look the same to you. So, like, you just get like, like when I first started editing, I had like super contrasty skin, like skin was orange, but it looked fine because it's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. That's what's cool though. Like if you look back, you should see that difference. Like if you yeah. look back, it's like, oh man, there's so much shit that I ignored or didn't even realize. And now you're like, you fine tune every a little bit of everything. Yeah. But it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely the stressful part, um, particularly with video too, where, uh, there's the the more fun part is like being on set you know, I you're with it. video yeah oh yeah video is its own thing that's why you have to be so hyper organized mm-hmm. to even like really attack it in like a in a in a what's the word yeah i guess in, in, in a good way like if you're disorganized you'll find yourself just kind of stumbling and messing around yeah. too much wasting a lot of time um like you gotta have a solid vision Mm-hmm. You have this, yeah. You have that solid vision, and I already have by now like this procedure that kind of provides a guideline. You know, like I make mm-hmm. a treatment, and that treatment travels on to the shoot, like the production and post. Mm-hmm. So like now, after a few years, like there's this like map that yeah. I like I know that I need to create at the beginning of the project in order to be okay, like on set shooting and in post. But even in post, it's just so it's not boring, but. I'm definitely in like an active person. Like I like mm-hmm. to be on set, walking around, thinking. It's like, okay, yeah, no, I love what you did that time. Let's do a little different next time. A little bit of a smart guy, an action, you know. Put like a little love, gumption into it. Put a little, oh, you know what I'm saying? You know, just giving these like, giving these people these moments and like living, like in the moment. And editing is just kind of like, okay, it's like the aftermath now. It's like, okay, you know, if you did a good job, if like. I look at all the footage and you see everything, you know, and, and the ideas translate from the treatment, you know, if you do a good job, but then it's like, now you have to piece it together. <laughs> so now you have to like take your time, like feeling out the song and like putting yeah. this there, putting this, that there on that has to be a little longer. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, it's a very sensitive thing, man. It's yeah. a very sensitive thing. Cause it's like, 
it's the last piece of the puzzle but yeah. it's like probably the most important because you're it like you can make a break yeah that and sound can make a break up exactly film exactly because it's like you're piecing the story together in this mm -hmm. moment you know so it's now all the pressure is like on the editor so so it's kind of stressful because it's like, okay, I have to direct. Great job. You did a good job. Now I have to edit. It's like, okay, let's see if I can do it again. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Like a round two, you know? Like, one more time. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, um, but it's fun, you know? Like, I, no complaints. Uh, like, ideally, you find someone who understands your style and understands the vision, you know, and you mm -hmm. work with them. But typically, budgets don't really have that flexibility yet, like where I am, you know, like with more independent artists, it's like, uh, you have to be a jack of all trades. You have to be a jack of all trades, but then like, you know, choose your shit at yeah. some point. Like I used to shoot my own music videos too, so I would direct and shoot and edit. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a, there comes a cost that like quality at that point, yeah. you know, you're trying to do too much. Yeah. You're trying to like control too much. Um, so it's really trust you know it's kind of like it's kind of like being an assistant on times five like yeah being an assistant you know is going to be like attentive on time you know mm -hmm. they're not going to show up late and you have to worry about where the fuck they are and you have to carry on shit. It's like choosing someone to shoot the music videos it's like they need to understand your your eyes like your mind yeah. and your vision and they need to understand you know the technical side of the camera and everything that goes into the lighting and the intricacies of that. Mm -hmm. And then once you find that person or persons, you know, because there's, there's there's so many yeah. out there, things get a little easier. Yeah. Things get a little easier. Yeah, because not everybody could be a master of everything. Mm -hmm. So like, there's always people that master sound, master light, you know, master editing, cinematography. Yeah, it goes back to the ego thing. Like, yeah. there's no way you can be a master of everything. You have to like realize that there's roles you yeah. know and there's people that specialize in those roles mm -hmm. and the more you like accept that yeah the better the better your product's going to be at the end of the of course, day you got to put aside i want my name the biggest mm -hmm. you know like you got to put this aside and just be like yo what do i contribute yeah like, what's my specialty what can i do for this and i guess it's like only slightly different for you right since you're a photographer you're like yeah. the lead you're like the lead but do you work with like set designers or you work with like you work with makeup artists, you work mm -hmm. with stylists, right? So it's like yeah. bringing those people into the world too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've never worked with a set designer before, but I do work with uh, makeup artists and stylists. And it's like, I don't know how like film does it, but like when it comes to photography, mm -hmm. like just a three person team, four person if you count the model too, it's like, oh my God, now we gotta line up everybody's schedule, this and that, yo, are they gonna flake? Mm -hmm. so like yeah sometimes it's a little difficult putting like big groups like if it was up to me like just me model yeah you're just That's fucking it. you have like the makeup kit on your arm yeah. and shit you're ready to go like, I God, actually baby. thought I could learn how to like I actually tried learning makeup so I could like <laughs> yeah did your girlfriend try to help you or something yeah my girlfriend ended up looking uh, horrible like with the makeup I used I did it was like very blotchy and <laughs> but like first time like, for the first time, time yeah yeah like, did she tell you what everything was about too? Like the blush does this and like yeah, the, you know? but like you know, I have a short attention span, so I was like, oh, okay, I got this. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, do you like square <laughs> eyebrows? <laughs> like terrible. Her eyebrows look like Eugene Levy's. <laughs> oh my god, man! And then you realize, man, makeup is such a important thing. Yeah, it really is about that whole process. Good makeup artists too, because like it shows like you know no makeup or good makeup. Mm -hmm. You know, because, like, a lot of people, like, like a lot of models, actually, like, they'll just come 10 minutes. Boom, boom, boom. But then when you have, like, a real makeup artist, you're like, oh, I see the difference. Especially when you, like, want to do something creative, like, creative ideas. Like, you need to know somebody that can do certain makeup looks. Like, that can put glitter on your face. That can make this look like the 70s, 80s, or whatever. Yeah, especially when you get colorful, too, right? When, mm -hmm. like, the... Um whatever they call the eye like eye shadow, eyeshadow yeah, you know yeah. it's like blue or purple but it's like more of a delicate thing so mm -hmm. you need somebody really paying attention to the small details mm -hmm. and that too having somebody on set paying attention to those yeah. details like as you're shooting you know you're active and like you, you sweat and it's like okay it's like one eyelash off but you're focused on like fucking exposure and yeah. focusing and all these other things you can't really focus on that so it's like having that extra element on set to you know like pay attention to all those little things yeah there like there have been shoots where um I shot it, 
put it out and then like i just see like a, a makeup blemish here i'm like oh no oh man this is like when i first started like i was like making a lot of like makeup errors i had one and she had like a streak here i was like mm-hmm. the fuck did i miss that damn yeah, yeah you can't catch everything yeah i remember shoot too yeah where i had uh this girl her in her like in her smile she had like on her tooth she had like a uh, lipstick on this but thankfully video? you know yeah, no no photos oh okay so you know yeah. thankfully it's like photoshop you can just kind of yeah. like you know uh, do the clone tool or whatever kind of hide it yeah. but it's like interesting it's like yeah that's you know i was kind of taking like medium shots yeah it's like, like how how I, how not the biggest that thing up. that um i hate for shoots is when they have their uh, their hair tie on their wrist and then you catch it last minute you're like Fuck. oh man because they're so hard to edit yeah wrist start yeah it, yeah mistakes like that suck yeah you know so i had a shoot uh i had like a uh what's it called what's it called when somebody's proposed i had a proposal shoot proposal. <laughs> yeah what's it called somebody what's it called proposal, proposal. <laughs> proposal. <laughs> i had this proposal shoot and it was um it was in this place that you know you get a wristband to enter oh, it was yeah. like a surprise you know so kind of shot it and it's nice you know, like family showed up oh surprise you know like oh you know and then we kept going with all the photos and stuff and then at the end we realized like oh shit they didn't take the wristbands off mm. so now like all the photos have the fucking wristband so now i have to kind of go in there and like photoshop each thing but the job's already been done yeah. i edited all the photos you know so now it's like this extra labor that i've been like kind of like you know yeah. like fuck, I mean, really it sounds messed up but it depends like are you getting paid enough for that no, it was already done. Yeah. Job's already done, so I got paid, and it's like, oh shit! Actually, yo, can you take this these wristbands off? Oh, he asked you to. Yeah, and oh. uh, you know, now I have to. Now that I'm saying it here, I have to because mm. you know I've already delayed a week longer than like I said. Yeah, I got yeah. it. So now you know, but it's those small details that it's hard to think about. Mm. Mostly because also too, that's like a proposal shoot. So yeah. you're thinking about like, okay, I need to pay attention. Like, this is an important moment in this guy's life. Oh my God, dude. I was pretty stressed out. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm probably not going to do proposals again because it's too strenuous. Proposals I'm okay with. The actual wedding? Oh, oh you I, haven't? You, you don't fuck with weddings? Nah, too much? I don't do weddings. Though. It's too much, huh? It's just too much. And, you know, like, I can't deal with the bride's though. You know, like, if I get an attitude, I'm going to give one back. Mm, you know, that's yeah like, that, and it's tough to eat that it's tough to like okay, i okay. like i just can't be like okay okay because like like i told you like you know like i was a bouncer i work in in the bar scene i don't know, I deal with that a lot but like as a bouncer you know you could be like well fuck you too you know like so i kind of had that mentality when it comes to stuff mm-hmm. so like it's like a natural instinct yeah like a natural instinctual fuck you so like, fuck and then you can't do that with a client <laughs> so, so yeah. like if i do that with a client like i'm not gonna curse out a bride on her wedding day yeah but i know like if i get the wrong bride i might so i'd rather not mm. so you know you know your limitations you're missing out on some money there though man no yeah that's what a, that's what a lot of people says is good money i mean i um, do wedding i do videos yeah uh, like wedding videos and i've been doing it almost for three years now yeah. it, it financed like the beginnings of me investing in equipment but now it's like i can't fucking yeah. i can't really deal with it you get tired of it there's there's like limited no, I wouldn't say that. For photography, there's like there's good creativity. Although you're supposed to get these certain you know photos and get this and this and this, it's very demanding. Yeah. You know, so it it definitely requires a lot of patience. There's um there's a photographer, um, Ryan Bernizer. Mm. Have you heard of the Bernizer method? So it's like if you want to use a shoot a wide angle shot but super shallow depth of field, like you say, let's take you let's say you got an 85 millimeter lens, wide open manual focus boom but then take a picture of the surroundings stitch everything together and then you'll get like that um that wide angle shout of the field type vibe mm. so i was uh i read that he did an ama on reddit yo this dude does like 200 weddings a year and charges like 70 grand for pictures damn that's bread yeah i've worked with some photographers that mm. you know like you know they're making good money because yeah. they have like uh there's certain photographers carry themselves a certain way like yeah. you know going back to ego like i would remember being, being in this one wedding and this dude was such an asshole this dude was like unnecessarily an asshole you're shooting you're cool you know you're probably yeah. making some good money you know you're doing well you're creative but you're just shooting wedding photos man you're just yeah. shooting these couples and this guy was so arrogant you know i feel like photographers in general they're dicks they're dicks too yeah. it's like certain environments too where like Wedding videographers don't have the best name. Wedding videographers are like, 
they're annoying yeah. you know they have like that reputation so like i'm coming into this world with like my mentality like i'm a director and i do all these other things and here i am in this world where it's like we're considered like annoying or you know we have to yeah. be ghosts so it's like knowing h- how to switch off like like you said like i okay i wasn't a bouncer but i do have a limitation in terms of yeah. how like much attitude i can take but I know how, I know when to walk away. Yeah. I know to be like, sure, because I know it's not worth like fucking the whole thing up. Have you ever of, had a horror story as a wedding videographer, like with a bride or bride's family? Thankfully not. Thankfully you know? not. I'm pretty careful, cool. mostly because I work for another company. So if I do oh, that, yeah. I'm I'm representing like you know uh, this company uh, when I show up. Yeah. But even for myself, like uh, I've never. The only moments like I'm embarrassed about are like earlier on when I would direct music videos, my impatience would, you know, like come out Mm -hmm. and sometimes I would like kind of go at like a crewmate, you know, like one of my own people or, you know, I would give direction in like a more harsher tone or something like Mm -hmm. that. Um, and that's just learning real shit though. You know, you, you don't want to give off that feeling ever, you know, especially to your own people. Of course. And you, you, you learn that, uh, me being having been an impatient person you know more before like Mm -hmm. you learned that uh sometimes the hard way situationally you know but uh for weddings and stuff i know it's not worth it you know yeah it's kind of like especially by now too i'm just like yo just you know give me these details i'll shoot this dress yeah kiss forehead to forehead like you just gotta be understanding people's situations like this is a once in a lifetime uh for people if that too that's why i'm really like so it's like um, chill. I'm really chill now, you know. Yeah. I'm really down to earth. Like this is like their moment, and it's already annoying enough. Yeah. Like this couple is with us like the whole fucking day, yeah. and it's their special day. But and we're with them, like giving them these directions, you know. So at the end of the day, like, good man, just trail off and yeah. party. Um, but they're with us for such a long time, so it's kind of like yeah, just just try and make jokes. That's mm-hmm. what I do. I try and make jokes. I try and make it easy and fun and give them space because uh it's supposed to be a good day you know it's not supposed to feel like this goddamn job yeah they're getting married yeah. although it's a big business the flowers cost money the candles yeah. cost money i like, mean like they're everything. dropping like 20 mm-hmm. grand probably in, or more for a wedding mm-hmm. it gets crazy you know like i've been some in, uh, uh some indian weddings yeah uh and and these venues are crazy you know i heard and those they, go for like three days or something right yeah, it's a long celebration. I've only been, thankfully, because of the company I'm in, you know, they kind of, uh, either they bring people on board for two days, or it's like, yeah, if they want to do three days, they can. But, um, okay. But yeah, fuck weddings. Yeah. Just kidding. Mine suck. Don't get married. Don't get married. Don't even get in a relationship. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Let me well, I schedule. I schedule a few people this week. Yeah. But I feel like now, I just feel shitty. You know? Yeah. I'm like here, you know, look at me. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, you know, uh, I shoot sometimes. <laughs> I shoot. You know, I, I looking I like, like Jay Leno. Yeah, you you good? You come to work. So t- 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 tell me about that beard. <laughs> that, that beard. What's what's going on with that beard? How do you it's a beard. How long do you It's actually not a beard, it's cousin in. I killed him and I wore him. Jesus fucking Christ, you a murderer? <laughs> hey, everybody, I got a murderer on the podcast. No. That's my goal. <laughs> Interview a murderer. Imagine. You ever wonder how many murderers like you cross paths with in public? I never wonder that. Yeah. I assume some people think about it, but it's not something that ever crosses my mind. Yeah. That's something that's crossed your mind before. Yeah, like when I like when I used to bounce, I used to bounce at um, I don't want to say the name of the place, but it was like packed. And I was oh, a like, secret. Is it? No, illegal? it's not a secret. I just illegal immigrants show up there. Nah, I just don't work there no more. So, mm, okay, yeah, you don't want to, yeah, forget about yeah, it. So, like, I used to hang out on the stairs. Not like downstairs would be all packed, and I would be like, like you know, like you just you're always scanning the place. So it's like, I wonder if people, someone in here killed someone at one point. Like this is like shit. I would think just because I'm bored. Yeah, I'm like, well, you're how long were your shifts? Six hours mm-hmm. on my feet. Like oh, I couldn't sit down. I, like just scanning the place. Like that's why I loved getting in the back door because I would just be on my phone all day. Where I mean, that's that's your job too to kind of make sure the place like is secure and yeah, yeah. So I was just like look around, like oh, I wonder if anybody here killed anybody at one point. There definitely, there definitely is someone in there. Yeah, that's either stab someone at least, you know. Yeah. If there's like eighty people in there, right? Oh, absolutely. One of them has had to like one stab. One has someone. had to at one point. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I could do that. 
I probably can't. Like stab someone? I don't someone? know why. I say, yeah, I don't know why I said I don't think. Oh, I, no, it's I don't easy. Think. No, fuck with you. I, I can't do it either. It's easy though. That's the scary thing. You can slip and oops, it goes right in. You know, here we it's, are talking about murder, but that's how easy. Like we're so delicate. Yeah, it's crazy. I actually know somebody like my friend, like he, my other friend. She asked for like a Swiss Army knife, and he tossed it, and through some weird act of God, it opened up and cut her right here, and she was like just spraying blood. She oh, didn't man. like. She was okay, but like she was just spraying blood, and we're like, "Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck?" Yeah. My friend goes, "Call an ambulance." I'm like, "I don't want to call an ambulance." Why? <laughs> because of accidents. Like, oh, this is when I was like in seventh grade. Oh so god! I, so I was like, we were young. That's young, young. So we were like, "Oh, I don't want to call an ambulance." Yeah. If you're throwing what if they an track me? Yeah. Oh like, man. Yeah. It was at his house, and he was like, "Call an ambulance." I'm like, oh, I don't want to. <sighs> and so like, we I would have called. Did, you, did the ambulance come? No. So like, he just bled out. She died that night. <laughs> no, no, like we put a <laughs> no, no, shit ton of pressure. Yeah, on her, uh, on her, on her. It was on her temple right here. It's like we just put a shit ton too. of pressure. Yeah, she just. She all right? Yeah, she's she fine. Right she's now? fine now. Yeah, she's doing great. Got like a permanent scar, maybe. Nah. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> Stitched it up or something. Yeah, like you stopped, off. and we were like, oh, okay, cool. Oh man, that's terrifying. And her cousin cleaned it up, and it was like, <sighs> crisis averted. Yeah. Wow. You're that, yeah, that makes sense. Throwing yeah. knives around, right? Seven, you, were, you probably it, wouldn't do it that. It was now. a closed Swiss Army knife. Who knew it would open up? That's true. And yeah, that's true. They're pretty tight, usually, usually. Yeah. Unless it's really used or like cheap. Yeah. Just kind of like throw it. And then yeah. one thing, that's crazy. Yeah, you that see like, like in shots and be like, like that's, that's, that's the closest like, I've already seen to somebody getting stabbed. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen um, anything, anything of the sort. Nothing yeah. close to that. I cut myself once, like in my finger, not like, uh-huh. you know, yeah. Like I was really little, same sort of thing. I was really little and I, for some reason, had a knife and and I just wanted to test the teeth or something. I just cut oh. my finger. Fuck. Gangsters don't live that long. My grandmother got pissed off. She like put me in timeout and I like cut myself. I was like, dude, I'm bleeding and you put like, yo, give me a break. When I, when I was younger, um, my brother was sitting on a reclining chair. You know, the, mm. remember the old one? You just pull the, pull the lever. Yeah, yeah, you just fall back. So, like, I saw dust bunnies under. I was, like, uh, I was in first grade or something. My brother's two years younger than me, so he was, like, in preschool. Mm. So, I remember seeing a dust bunny, and I, and I used my finger to get it out, and my brother pulls it, not knowing my finger was under there. Oof. And it's two metal bars. It's, like, two thin metal bars. Yeah. And I went right on my finger. And my finger was, like, bleeding. And actually, I'm numb on this finger. Oh, fuck. On this side. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, if you touch yeah. my finger, you could feel the ball that was there. So, Dude. Oh, yeah. That's hey, you permanent. want to touch it? That's permanent. Where exactly? It's right here. Right no, there? Like here. Ooh, what the fuck? So, what is that? I don't know. It's just like a ball from the... It's just like bone. From the stitches. <sighs> Jesus, yeah. dude. That's brutal. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty delicate. I mean, when that happens as a kid, too, that's just even more like yeah. horrifying. Did you just never want to look at that chair again or some shit? Oh my god, it was terrifying. Your brother must have been fucking like devastated, or he was too young. Like, I don't what? even know. That's so far back. I don't even know. You just remember the injury. Yeah, I just remember the injury and the situation. Yeah, Are you gonna go back home and like, bro? I just remember, bro. Oh, you're a piece of shit. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we're so delicate. Always have to try to be careful, but I no, but that makes sense because you were a bouncer, so you was kind of like scoping shit out. You were yeah. looking for certain people. Like, did, did you did you ha- did you have to like uh, what was that dude's name from uh, Freshman to Bel Air? Jazzy Jeff, DJ Jazzy, DJ Jazz. DJ. Oh, you know what I'm talking about when yeah. like Phil would be like Phil yeah, would throw yeah, him yeah. out. How many times did you have to do that? Um, I've never physically thrown somebody. Mm. That's I, good though. You don't really want it to get. I've to that pushed point. somebody where um. It looked like I threw him, but I pushed him. Um, yeah. I had a girl punch me in the face. She hooked me. Damn. Drunk girl. I don't think a sober girl would do that. Yeah. After looking at you, like, yeah, I think I'm going to punch this guy. Yeah. Like, we were like, yo, she can't come back in. I was at the door. And then she tried to come in. I'm like, man, man, you can't come in. And then she tried coming in hard, so I started pushing her. I'm like, yo, you can't come in. And she hooked me. Damn. Yeah. So I was like, yo. It's never gone too ugly, though, I guess, huh? That's good. It's weird. All the shit gets, like, stays away from me. 
Oh, like well, if I'm that's in the a relief. Front, if I'm in the front, something will happen downstairs. If I'm downstairs, something will happen. In the front. <laughs> yeah, it's like the it's weird. Like when I'm not in the you back, avoided it. Like the only time I wasn't in the back, something happened in the back. Mm, damn. Yeah. Um, it was. It's weird. It's probably uh, you know, it's, some guardian angel. You know, yeah. it's God watching. Like, don't worry, I got you. Like some shit happened over there. Yeah. It's fortunate, yeah. man. I don't think you want to really face some shit. No. You know, you yeah. know like I don't want to. It's was this because, after you did uh, jujitsu? So you, I got into bouncing because of jujitsu. Because jujitsu oh. gave me the confidence, yeah, to like calmly restrain somebody and be like, "Yo, chill out." So, like you know, you don't you don't choke somebody. Like you don't do all that shit. It's just like, yo, I'll pin their arms to the side and be like, "Yo, mm-hmm. chill out." Disabled. Yeah, like if they want to like try to get like you know, if they want to like throw hands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll talk my shit, but yeah, like it's um. It's pretty chill though, like, like everything just stayed away from me. Yeah. And you know, you don't want to go out and hurt somebody because, like, what if you accidentally hook someone and like they crack their head on something? You're fucked. Yeah, and they fucking die. You know? Yeah, like those boxing yeah. matches where yeah they end up killing the other person. Yeah, I don't want a fucking body on my conscience. Yeah, that's a lot, man. Yeah. That's too much. Bang. I'm glad. I'm glad you haven't killed anybody, man. Yeah, me too. And I'm glad you're. Um, I'm glad you're so creative. With how you shoot. I'm a creator, not a destroyer. Well, you do fires. I do fires. But you're not, you don't set anything on fire. They're the flames of creation. The fire of creation. Like the, the phoenix. Inside. Now, have, do you have a um, favorite shoot that you've done? You've done so many different things. Was that with Jorge, the naked one? <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> was that during the summer? Yeah, that was during the summer. Um, okay, so I somehow convinced him to be nude in, a, in an area. Yeah. And he was leaning on a door, and it turns out that the door was somebody's apartment. We found out when they opened up the door and just saw a hairy ass when yeah. he went out to go for a smoke break. And he goes back inside, and then we move him, and then he comes back out. He goes, That's not even the weirdest shit I've seen over here. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably seen some, he's probably seen some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, I was like, Yo. Homeless I'm, fucking, you know? I was like, Yo, sit on the floor and, uh, I'm like, let's make this shit look cool. And, he, and the guy goes, I, I wouldn't recommend that. I've seen needles on the floor. Oh, heroin well, addicts. We're like, yeah. Just, Going at it, like, too. I guess you shouldn't sit on the floor. <laughs> this guy lives here. Was that, was that the first time you, you shot someone nude? You were experimenting with that JL? world? JL? Yeah, JL. Nah. Oh, you've done it all. beforehand. Yeah, I've done I've done a couple nude I can't, because like my before. mind, like, time, I can't really, like, piece it together. Yeah, yeah I've, uh, I was actually working on a nude body positivity project. Right. Like, yeah, I, like, I recall that. And uh, this is like 2017. Like, I really wanted to drop it, but like, I looked at the shots and I'm like, I don't like these shots. They're not like, you know, like there's no story behind them. Like, some of them, some of them are great. Some of them, they were just like, you know, they were imposed right. You know, there was mistakes on my end. It was like it's just a nude body. Like, there's no story to it. I feel like their faces just like. Like marble statue sort of. Yeah, thing. so it's like, you know, so like I actually destroyed those negatives because it's like. Oh, there you go. That's what you fucking destroyed. Yeah. Create a ghost full circle, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Like. Oh, man. Okay. Cause that's I don't a wanna, bummer though, but that's good. Yeah, I don't want to hold on to them because like what if I do it like years later? I don't want to deal with the bullshit, mm-hmm. you know, like, and it's not really. They weren't my favorite, like my favorite shots. So, um. Like I really feel bad. Like I just hope nobody thinks like I took advantage of them or anything. But like it just it just never happened. Yeah, no. Photography is a really sensitive thing, man. There's like obviously the process of creating, and then there's the process of collaborating, and you know you're creating at the same time. But like at the end of the day, it's like we kind of have the uh, the gavel, right? We yeah. kind of have like that final say, like if you know we're proud of the work or not, you know. And it comes through that process, yeah. especially when you're working with you. You were shooting digital or film. Film. It yeah. was on this one. Yeah. So you're processing these things and then you kind of have to wait for the development and then like you're finally seeing it uh, in mm-hmm. the moment. Yeah. You know, and you know, if you like yeah. your shit, you know, if you look at it, you're like, wow, you like you're impressed with yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're proud, you know, there's that proud feeling. And if you're not, why would you want to release uh, work yeah. you consider yourself mediocre? Exactly. You know? You're just putting out work just to put out work. Man. It's yeah. not something that I want to do. Like, I haven't posted in a while on Instagram because, like, I haven't really done a shoot where I'm like, yo, this is it, you know? Oh, it's good. It's good that there's kind of this curation thing. But it's also important, too, to kind of, I think, do a lot of trial and error, you know? Yeah. 
So if you were to share that too, it's like who knows what the feedback would have been and then maybe but it seems like you have like a a good community of supporters that like yeah. jump on board to these like projects that you have going on in your head. Yeah. You have any any future ideas that you want to try and work on this year, you know, 2021, baby. So, I had post a post-covid. Post-covid. Well, covid's not done yet, but now, you know, I think we've, <laughs> we've kind of gone a lot the, gone a lot back. We're in the third act, I feel. Mm -hmm. Final act. God the forbid, vaccines. God forbid we're in the second act. Well, if it's the third act and, you know, when the vaccines, it could potentially be a sequel. The vaccines cause, like, the fucking zombie apocalypse and then I mean, sequel, CDC was like, warning about it. Yeah. They yeah. were joking, but I, I hopefully they were joking. I hope they were fucking joking. Yeah. I'm not ready for something like that. I'm not good enough at zombies to do this. Yeah. Well, well I just got a new TV in my house. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I just, I just hang out there until they break in, you know, like, I don't know. I would probably kill myself before I let a zombie come <laughs> Because they're just savages. They yeah. just bite you apart. I'm not in the mood to even know how that feels. And they're World War Z zombies, not Night of Living Dead zombies. Oh, man. Like the fucking, um, what's that movie, 28 Weeks Later? You oh. know, the fucking running. That's my biggest fear. Like something that it can't runs. Run. I don't think they could run. I, I just need to do that for movies to make it more intense. Do you but remember if the, the skin is rotting? Like, yeah. You know? Like their ribs are going to fall out while they're running. Yeah. It's do impossible. You, do you remember uh, the Friday the 13th, uh, the 2009 reboot? Should we watch it? Um, I'm not sure. So there was a scene and like the scariest shit ever to me at the time was Jason. You know Jason, right? He walks very slow, methodically. Yeah, very menacing. Yeah, dude, he ran and I was like, fuck that. Oh, you know I don't have that image in my head, but that's pretty like that's pretty scary. I'm not a fast person. So Well, you have jujitsu. So you you have a moment. When I'm gonna well, do he has a on, machete. On board, on board a guy with a machete, he'll just go. Well, yeah, oh, fuck. but you're, you're you'd be smart enough to figure out like okay, you know he approaches you like grab, <laughs> grab machete. He has, but he has like supernatural strength. Yeah, right. That's the thing. So you grab his hand, you're like, oh. he's, he's a zombie. He'll yeah. just fucking start cutting your head slowly off with your own hand. Oh, oh my, my god. god, that's the worst. When you think you have the upper hand, he'll like rip your thumb off. So you got like a little fractured shard yeah. of thumb, and he's. Like, <sighs> yeah, I just kill myself before any zombie gets to me, man. Yeah. For sure. But at least I have now, like, the TV I can enjoy for the moment. You know? <laughs> Until then. A lot of movie catching up, you know? Imagine there is a zombie apocalypse and you just die like Bill Murray. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude. That... I love that movie, by the way. Zombie it's like a great that. movie. That's one of my favorite, like, zombie movies, but in, just in general, like, action, comedy. I love how he was fucking around and got killed. Yeah, that was so <laughs> sad. I was so happy to see him. And he was like, uh, and it was like such a great cameo. I remember first time watching it, and I was like, fucking devastated. I was like, bro, what? <laughs> Some comedic genius, dude, just accidentally <laughs> shot. Oh, he shot them. Oh, spoiler, whoever fucking oh. hasn't seen it. But yeah. You haven't yeah. seen a movie from 10 years ago. Yeah, please. I mean, fuck it. We'll spoil it. Yeah, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> That was so funny, man. And that's such a great cast, too. Yeah. Who's that dude? Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah. Should Good not actor. He shouldn't have been Lex Luthor, though. Was he Lex Luthor? He was, yeah. No, bad casting. But DC just keeps fucking up. Yeah, DC doesn't doing. know what they're doing. Or now, maybe they're getting, you know, Wonder Woman. I think there's a successful run. But... So, like, I feel like the Snyder Cuts are make it or break it. Mm. If, the, if it's ass, that's it. Yeah. I can't remember anything else that the Snyder Brothers have done other than 300. What else did they do? Who? Cool. That was Zack Snyder, right? Zack Snyder, yeah. He did, did he do Watchmen? Mm, I can't say. Because I, I haven't watched Watchmen. He might have not. Marvel's got their shit together. Yeah. With the Russo brothers. Yeah. And like, they're trusting um, different sort of directors. Like, they just have this quirky, but still on point, mm -hmm. like, uh, pristineness to them. I, I can't pronounce that director's name. Taiki Watiti? You know him? Uh, uh, he did Thor, right? Yeah, Thor Ragnarok. That Thor was so Ragnarok much was fun. such a good movie. That was so good, you know? You remember that, uh, this, the, the rock guy? Korg? Yeah. Was it in Korg? Yeah, something like that. He was pretty chill. He was like, ah. Hey, mate. <laughs> High pitched voice. He was adorable, though, you know? You Yo, the funniest shit was when Loki showed up to Thor while he was down. And then as soon as Loki leaves, he goes, ghost! And then he tries to kick him and kicks a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna watch that movie now. Just Dude, because of that. Yeah, and it's like trusting these directors that you know are different. Like that director made Jojo Rabbit. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's like about the um, took place World War II towards the end of World War II, where mm -hmm. Germany's losing, 
and this kid is like very uh pro hitler you know it's this little kid and he has like this imaginary adolf hitler in his head that's like guiding mm. him as he's being taught like how to fight how to use a weapon and stuff but you know germany's losing the war so it's like it's got this like quirkiness to it um and ultimately it's still kind of making fun of like the whole nazism sort of fucking mm -hmm. pro uh dictatorship sort of thing i've heard of it i don't remember it though it's really funny man yeah. it's really funny there's this one scene you know how they all have to say like Yo, Hitler. Yeah. when they meet each other there's like hello was a piece of shit by the way hmm? Hitler was a piece of shit by the way yeah i just want to yeah just clarify you know like we don't condone anything fuck he's done nazis. uh we just talk about jojo rabbit uh fuck nazis fuck hitler um up the ass with a pineapple yes that was in little nicky yep you remember that? <laughs> that's the, that was so that's torture that's probably hell to be he honest he was like this one he goes no <laughs> oh, he chose the small one the big ass pineapple <laughs> yeah yeah no the movie's fucked up man. Yeah. um no there was a scene where they were just like these characters like walked into a living room and there's like seven other people and mm -hmm. you have to greet everybody Hell Hitler. and the other guy's like Hell Hitler. Hell Hitler. Hell Hitler. Hell Hitler. and there it's just like this prolonged silly ass <laughs> moment where they're just like greeting each other it's so good man but that director is great yeah he's really funny and yeah he directed Thor Ragnarok right. that was uh, one of my favorites yeah. yeah they just and Guardians of the Galaxy too they just have like mm. they just know there's some yeah. some some formula they have you know that really yeah. works and then like DC has like Superman versus Batman I don't know Okay. I feel like it's Marvel because, like, you know, the people that were involved with Marvel, like mm -hmm. Marvel, um, were, they're the ones running it. Like, the ones that wrote the comic books or, it's actually Marvel Studio. DC has to answer to Warner Brothers and shit. So, mm -hmm. like, you know. like a middleman. Yeah. Like that. That's what I think. Yeah. It's but okay. You don't, we'll, we'll make, see this, you don't have to make uh, excuses for them. We'll see the Snyder Cut. Yeah. We'll that's, see the Snyder Cut. That's going to be, like, the, like, that's what it is. Yeah. Let's yeah, I'll text you be like, bro, that was actually pretty good. I'm like, holy shit. If it was bad, I'd be like, hours. <laughs> it's probably, it's probably, you want to place a bet? Huh? Five bucks. Oh, or place a bet, a burrito from a the burrito. Spanish spot, if it's good or bad. I say it's going to be bad. Okay. I'll do it. I'll, I'll say it's good. And that's subjective, but we'll see in terms of just full. We'll find a third party. Yeah. We need a middleman. Just we'll, like Warner Bros. We'll see what Ryan Tomato says. Yeah. <laughs> That's the middle man. Can you imagine they get a hundred? I owe you. I owe you a burrito. Yeah. Lengua. Your choice. Lengua yeah. burrito. Lengua, baby. Yeah. But juice. Um, thank you for coming on, man. Oh, I think no we problem. spoke about thank a lot of cool me, shit. Man. Um, I hope to have you again. More comfortable yeah. chair. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, man. We'll stay posted, man. We'll stay updated. Cool. Yeah. Guys, take care. Wu Tang forever. The ten viewers. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you.